Obviously, there's a lot more tile that needs to be pulled out. But before I get to that, I want to address this water and mold damage here, which I've known for some time has been going on, but now I can see it that the sink is out of here and the floor is rotted out here wherever to, because of the leak. First, I'm just gonna make some exploratory cuts in here. This stud is completely ruined and the floorboard and obviously under here. So I'm gonna have to keep cutting this back and do some more exploring and try to figure out how to uh, correct this. I exposed the bulk of the damaged area uh, to see what's going on and cut well beyond the damaged area. I knew there was a vent pipe coming up here and I wanted to make sure there was no leakage from there, but that's all nice and dry. But you can see this stud is completely, that's shot, there, there isn't, there's no stud left, it's just gone, just gone. So here's where I'm at with the floor repair. I cut out a, a damaged section of subfloor and, you know, over, over cut it. Um, what I did down here was... Uh, that two by six that you see laying across there, that's an extra wall that I built to help support the, uh, the joist. Because you can see they are severely compromised here, all rotted out. And you can see, uh, I mean, you can see this is just, there's just, there's just nothing laid. It's going right through. That's the, uh, that's a siding on the other side. So what I did here was cut some pieces of three quarter inch plywood, which fits right into this area here. And I made it like a perfect fit. So it was really nice and tight. And I uh, firmed up those joists that are rotted out to start out there. And you can see I did the three that are, that are all damaged. So that'll firm this joist up at least this rotten area. And next what I'm gonna do is put a pressure treated two by four under here for some more support. Okay, next I'm gonna take some pressure treated wood and I'm gonna get it underneath each of these joists here. So I cut three pieces to get it under the three damaged joists and I'm gonna bang them in now. One. That's nice. Not bad, huh? I'm going to reinforce all these joists with another 2x10 joist, which I have here, and that has to get underneath the three quarter inch plywood that's gonna sit on top. Well, there's a little bit of three quarter inch plywood here that it isn't damaged, so I'm gonna clean that up. I might as well take the sill plate out too because this whole two by four is gonna get replaced all the way down to the other end to repair the damage. So I'm gonna make a clean cut here all the way up through the two by four, and then all the way it'll sit on the new joist that I'm making. Now that I got everything shored up really nice in the way of blocks, my wall, I cut through there with my multi uh, saw. I took this little piece out here. I'm gonna try to get all these studs out. All these studs need to be replaced. It's gonna need a new uh, bottom plate here. Um, if I can't get them out, I'll take my uh, multi tool and I'll get in here with a metal blade to, uh, to cut these nails out. But for now, I'm gonna just start going to town trying to pry stuff out. Pretty much just been uh, ripping everything up with the pry bar here, pulling out what I can. For now, let's uh, continue ripping out 
at the last of these studs out, and nothing was really supported underneath. I mean, this is what you're sitting on. Look at this. Look at this. Just garbage. Rotted away. Rotted away. So right now it's just manhandling this stuff off. I'm considering going outside, taking the siding off, and cutting this out. At that time, I'd be able to replace this lousy ledger board, too. I was going to save it until the spring. What I was going to do was put a couple extra 2x10s in between here, like in between each one, to support it for now, lay the floor on it, and then in the springtime, go out. And I still might, because I kind of want to get the inside done so I could get the uh, floor tiled and eventually our kitchen back. I'll take the, uh, I'll take a sawzall blade or maybe my multi-tool and cut all these nails out and then toenail the new ones in. Uh. All right, the window didn't fall. I guess that's a uh, success. Anyway, I'm gonna get the shop back, clean everything up, and then I'll be back. So I got everything cleaned up to the best that I can right now, and now I'm gonna start putting my support joists in. So, check the way the crown goes on this. And then I'm gonna put this one in here, and that's gonna be where my new plywood will sit on top of it, and I'll have a little extra underneath here as well. This piece, this ledger board, isn't too damaged. It gets very damaged down there, which I'm gonna to have to address from the other side of the house. But in the meantime, then I'm gonna slip that in there after I get that in, and I'll secure that to the existing ledger board here, which is secure. So I'll do this one on camera, I'll finish up the rest, and then we'll see how it looks. For now, I'm gonna take a couple three-inch construction screws and just get this situated up in here. And what I wanna do is come through the face here so I, I make sure I'm flush with the existing plywood and then I know the rest of the run will be flush. See, I pulled that up really nice. Okay, so I'm just gonna screw the new uh, joist into the old one, straight across. A couple in the back. Now I'll take my small hunk of ledger board because now the floor will sit not only on top of all of this but at, on top of this as well that's it I'll finish up the other uh, one two three bays well this is where we're at all the uh, bad joists are reinforced and I'm ready to get some plywood on here that's called sistering up the joists and I did the three that were Severely rotted. One, two, three. I also, to reinforce the ledger board, cut a couple pieces of two by ten and put them along the back. So I'm gonna go cut some plywood now, get the floor down, and uh, then I'll start rebuilding the studs underneath the window. 
Okay, so I got the new floor in. I cut out the piece of three quarter inch plywood. I had to notch it out over here and then I fastened it down with some uh, construction screws. I'm starting to build the, uh, the studs out here to reconstruct the wall. You can see I got a couple more studs over here lined up. And the reason I left this open was uh, I'm gonna connect the drain pipe now. So here's the old drain pipe and I cut a new piece to size. And the reason I left these other studs off is so I could get this in. So I'll be able to slide that through. And then I have the union, which I'll join at the union and then ultimately put an elbow in there. And then I could finish building out my stud walls. So right now I'm gonna get this union connected. So first I'll start by cleaning this up with a little of the purple primer. Get this entire side all the way around. After I prime it with the purple primer, then I use the cement. And this is going to be behind the wall, so I want to make sure we definitely have good coverage throughout. for a couple seconds after giving it a little twist. I'm going to do the same to the inside pipe. Give it a little spin while it's in there, make sure it's seated deep, and then hold it. Put a couple studs in now. So we're going to start with, uh, I don't know if you could see, I drew some pencil lines here. That was when I was uh, screwing the plywood down. That's to let me know where the, my new joists are, the ones that I sistered up against the damaged joists. So I have a pencil line here, so I know there's a joist here, and I want, I want a good stud right over that. block here just to make sure that my stud is nice and flush in there. First I'll fasten the bottom and then I will plumb it up. So to toenail these in, two on one side one on the other, and that'll be as strong as could be. Now we'll plug that up. It's already on the money. Let's plumb that way. Make sure that this makes up nice. Recheck that. Perfect. Good. I'll toenail the top end. Double check that I didn't come out of plumb. there. 